Hi, I'm Bob Williamson, and we're at Honey Lake Church and Worldwide Ministry here in Greenville, Florida, or near there anyway, on the Honey Lake Plantation Resort and Spa. And I've got my good friend here, T.K. Weatherell, President of Samaritus of FSU and former Speaker of the House and avid hunter and um, especially turkeys and all the rest. So. Welcome to Honey Lake, TK, and uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah, it was a great message today, and um, the uh, central theme of it was is uh, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, I guess, to accept Christ as your Savior. Uh, and um, as far as uh, the highlights of, of the message you gave today, when you uh, were thinking about this and praying about delivering this message, what did you, what did you um, feel that the Lord was, was telling you? Um, you? You had that gigantic Bible. I don't think I've ever seen one that far. And you seem to think that it uh, indicates you felt it was intimidating. But uh, uh, you want to go over a little of that? Well... I, I got to thinking about it, and every time you go to church, it seems like all the people or most of the people in the church are, are really born again, or at least they believe they are. And uh, they all carry their Bibles around with them. And we all probably need to do a better job in reading it and understanding it. But the Bible can become, to some, very intimidating because it, it is a lot of words and a lot of, a lot of understanding of, uh, of different books and written a long time ago and, and, and can be very intimidating. So I was trying to figure out a way, like we do in education, to encourage children to read, but we start them off with something they enjoy, then we move them into textbooks and whatever. The same principle with the, the message today is one, start with some simple verses, get people thinking about them, and really understand what the Bible is all about, and then hopefully you'll take that and expand upon it and, and move out to the rest of it. In addition to that, I wanted to sort of make a point that God doesn't want you just to, to read the Bible. He wants you to live the Bible, and, and each day you'll have an opportunity, hopefully, to do something. Maybe it's recite a verse, maybe say a prayer at a rotary uh, meeting, or maybe it's just to do a good deed. And so I was trying to do those two things in the message. And, um, you know, that goes along very well with my study of the Bible. I mean, when you look at Jesus himself, when he taught, uh, he always uh, told stories. And I noticed you, you told some interesting story of the homeless guy and and some people that you'd met and uh, it seemed to very uh, much resonate with the audience because I had several people come up to me and tell me that they got a lot out of that and um, so I think that you accomplished that. Um, one story you told was about your battle of, with cancer and um, and and that was a very moving part I felt of, um, of the service um, you're one of my best friends, if not my best friend, and um, I'm, I'm more familiar of it uh, than most people. Um, and, you know, um, the cancer spread some, and, and you experience uh, uh, more pain than you've had in the past, and um, it's affected um, your walking and some other things. How has that um, affected your walk with God? Well, I think actually the cancer strengthened my walk with God from the, from the very first diagnosis to today and then on down the road. I, I, as I mentioned, I, I ask God to cure the cancer every day. I'm going to ask Him. I don't think it's going to happen. But I really don't think God wants that to be my role. I mean, I, I'm sure he's not out punishing me by any stretch of the imagination, but I think he wants me to use the cancer, the treatments and that kind of thing as part of the message that, that God will be with you. He'll walk through this journey with you. It may not be curing your cancer. It may be delivering a message to, of hope to others that have cancer. Uh, 
maybe it's keeping me alive for another day so that somebody else can find the cure for cancer. I'm not sure what it means, but I'm convinced that part of the reason that, that uh, I've done as well as I've done is that God's with me and he wants me to use that as a message that of hope for others with cancer, but also a message of hope for faith and their religion. And it's a way to, to bring you back to the church, to the Bible, because I, like you, at a younger age, might not have been quite as uh, Christian as I should have been, but as time has gone on, uh, I, I have uh, begun to accept some things that I probably should have done at an earlier age. <laughs> Yeah. TK, you, uh, you mentioned that the Bible was old and, um, and historical in nature, and a lot of the names and cities and so forth no longer exist and hard to pronounce and all that. And, you know, it's a common perception around um, the country, particularly with the media. They're always trying to say the Bible is old and outdated, but According to scripture, I mean, God is timeless. There, he doesn't have a beginning or an end. And the Bible, um, actually, God talks about the Bible as saying it's the same today as it was a thousand years, as it will be a thousand years from now. So he doesn't change. What changes is society. Unfortunately, it changes for the worse, uh, which is what we're experiencing now. I know that... Um, um, You've been very active in our worldwide ministry. Do you, um, what do you think, just your opinion, that it will take um, to change uh, the culture and our society back to one of uh, one nation under God where morality would rule and uh, immorality would be more of the exception and that um, that it'd be a wholesome place to raise your kids and grandkids again, or do you even think that's possible? Well, I think it's possible, and, and I think it will happen. I, I think that's part of God's message. It's going to happen. Uh, yes, the Bible was written 2,000, 1,500 years ago, uh, and, and a lot of those places don't exist anymore. But to me, the fun part of the Bible, the fun part that I've really begun to enjoy, there are so many stories in the Bible and they're very interesting stories. If you take those stories and transpose them or move them forward to today and make them relevant in terms of football or, or politics or, or whatever, I think that's what's gonna change where people can, uh, the average Joe who maybe doesn't read the Bible or doesn't even go to church every Sunday. I mean, I, know, I got a lot of friends who go to church every Sunday, put a lot of money in the offering plate and. Yeah, I was going to mention this in the, the message today, but then come Monday morning, you, you wonder if that's the same person you sat next to in church when you're doing business or see them in the community or, or whatever. So I, I think to me the trick is taking the Bible, and it, it is relevant, and putting it in terms where people today can relate to it, whether it be their lives, their children, their whatever. Um, that's the fun part of it. And that's what Jesus did. I mean, he, uh, he told stories and, and he told, uh, he wouldn't just sit there and, and give people laws and you need to believe this and that and if you don't, I'm going to swat you one. He, he would tell parables, you know, uh, like the prodigal son. This, this kid was, went out and blew his inheritance and he got in such a bad shape that he uh, was eating the stuff they were slopping the hogs with, and he said, man, I'll go home and beg Dad for forgiveness. Even if he'll let me be a servant, I'll be better off. He came back. Instead of um, doing that, his father welcomed him, held a big feast for him, and uh, it was a great example of how we should forgive and, uh, and um and deal with that. So I think I think what I like the most and what most people like about hearing you speak is that you can relate a, a deep um, theological message and just put it in ordinary terms that everybody can understand. So many people want to get up there who are PhDs like you 
and highly educated and seems to me like they want to dazzle everybody with their intelligence and when you get through they say what that guy say with you it's down to earth and it's simple and it's plain and anybody could understand it I don't care if they were a little kid or the most educated person in the room smartest guy in the room so um, I think that um, that there's much to be said about uh, telling the ministry through stories. And again, you're, you're the most powerful story you have, and I know this personally because I've sat in a turkey blind with you and a duck blind and gone deer hunting and ridden around with you and tried to kill hogs or whatever. And um, I, I, you know, I know that you're at peace with uh, with this disease that's afflicted you, and, and you and God can handle anything. I've heard you say it a thousand times, and, uh, and to me, that is a source of inspiration and hope. And uh, is there anything you want to say about that as we finish? Well, I, I, I hope that's the case. I've, I've become more and more at peace, but one of the things, your, your father died, and I was going to bring this up uh, in the message. I was trying to get through it, but um, a week or so ago. And, and so often I hear people say, well, we lost dad, or we lost mom, or something. They're not lost. Everybody knows, if they're born again, you know exactly where they are. You might be the lost one, but they're not lost. So... I try and, when I talk to people about it, I, I don't try and impress them with my understanding of the scriptures because I, I, I'm clearly not a scholar of the scripture. I read things, I try and relate to it, and then try and put it in a terms that just, I call them the average Joe, might be able to relate to, and hopefully it will spur them to go read their Bible to, to start thinking about it in their terms and uh, then they won't worry about being lost. Once you get at peace with yourself and at peace with where you're going to wind up one way or another, the rest of it kind of doesn't matter. You know, now, yeah, I'd like to kill a big gobbler every now and then and do some of that, but in the scheme of things, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to be in God's house, and he's got many mansions or, or, or many rooms in his mansion. I'm convinced he's got a great turkey room there and I'm going to get turkey hunt all year long. You're only going to get to hunt a few days of the week. But it's just once you believe that, the rest of it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, the good thing about it, I, I feel that God will perfect your turkey calling because right now <laughs> it ain't all that great, I'm telling you. So, I mean, you should be able to get them to come on in and cross the river. So this is Bob Williamson, and we appreciate you listening. And T.K. Weatherell, great, great man of God and a, and a, a courageous man, somebody I admire greatly. Thanks for watching. Thank you.